Hi everyone, you're watching The Film Whisperers on Bent TV, a show where two movie nerds talk all things film through a contemporary lens. I'm Matthew. And I'm Julia. So our beloved audience at home may have noticed something a little bit different about today's episode, and that is our new special guest co-host, Julia. Hold for virtual applause. Uh, Julia, this is your moment in the sun. Welcome to the couch. What can you tell our fans about yourself? Uh, what kind of movies do you like? What brings you here today? Thank you. Very happy to be here. Um, I'd like to stress I have absolutely no qualifications other than the fact that I have a uh, passionate interest and investment in good movies. What I would classify as good movies, uh, anything that relates to uh, a teen story, any terrible action movies, uh, natural disaster movies, also a really important one for me, um, and any film that involves women. So it's a good night to be here. <laughs> uh, well, I can say for myself, you are more than qualified, Julia, and we couldn't be more excited to have you on the show today. Um, and today, you know, funnily enough, actually, the theme we're looking at um, is female friendships in films. So we're going to have to talk a little bit about all the films that focus on women friendships, um, the good, the bad, and the WTF as usual. Um, but I thought we'd start off, obviously, with the good ones. So, Julia, when you think of women in film, or more specifically, female friendships in film, uh, is there a film that comes to mind off the bat that you're like, yep, yeah, this is my go-to, this is the one that I love? A hundred percent. I feel like you can't have a conversation about female friendships in film without talking about the 90s classic, First Wives Club. I feel like there's so much here that needs to be unpacked. It's not just about women being bold enough to wear cream power suits and dancing in the streets of New York. You're talking about Goldie Hawn, Bette Midler, Diane Keaton, uh, three women who work together, um, become empowered by seeking revenge against their husbands. But it's more than that, Matt. It's more than a revenge <laughs> film for me. I feel like from the first scene where you see like Stockard Channing, like writing her like tearful letters, she's like holding her pearls that they had in college, like, and then like taking that step off and then sending off the letters. I know I'm not offering any kind of linear plot here, but it is an amazing film. Would you agree, Matt? Um, I definitely would. I feel like they don't make movies like that anymore. And I also feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously there's like that iconic scene where they're singing, um, is it You Don't Own, You Don't Own Me? Is that, what's the name of the song? That's right, You Don't Own Me. Yes. Um, and like, it's such a memorable scene that like everyone just knows when they think of the film. And I feel like a lot of movies these days, maybe it'll win time they will, but they don't have that same kind of like iconic scene that you remember. So I feel like it's a testament to a good film where even though it came out decades ago, and even if you haven't seen it in decades, like you just think of it and you automatically associate it with a particular scene. So that's what I always think of when I think of that movie. I also feel like it's one of those movies that I under that I definitely saw like way too young. Like I definitely saw it like on TV one day when I was like 10 years old and I was like, yes, I'm really connecting with these 40 year old women who are leaving their husbands. But um, <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving. I understand it. I feel a lot more now. And I feel like, like in all seriousness, like, it kind of speaks to some important stuff about being a woman in terms of feeling kind of trampled by the patriarchy, feeling like you don't have a voice, feeling like there's always the next best thing coming up behind you. But I think to kind of bring it back to our theme, like female friendship, like the whole sort of like ride or die mentality that like, even if you haven't talked to that friend for like 20 years, when you come back into each other's lives, like it's like a hundred percent, you're just in. They have like one lunch after the funeral where Goldie Hawn and Bette Midler get like absolutely trolleyed. Um, and then like from there, it's like not too long until they're into the revenge plot scheme. Um, and like hijinks ensue. You've got like Maggie Smith in there. There's like so many like very familiar faces. Like Sarah Jessica Parker plays like one of the kind of like floozy, uh, like next best thing for one of the husbands. It gave me unrealistic expectations of what to expect in relationships as I was older because whenever I watched a lot of those movies like yourself when I was younger, I was always like imagining myself in their position like, oh yeah, getting revenge on the man and stuff like that. Like I need some big dramatic blow up like that and it hasn't happened yet. So I'm waiting for my first wife's club moment. I'll be there as like yeah. willing to be a fake architect. I'll be like breaking into somebody's <laughs> house, like somehow framing somebody for like having sex with a minor. Like there's a lot of layers to First Wives Club. Like some of these revenge schemes are like, they, they dabble in some heavy business. The fact that you're on board, Julia, makes me so happy. So I'm glad I've got you. I'm, you're ready when the time comes. 
I've given you a bit of an overview of First Wives Club. What can you bring to the table? What are the good? I thought I would um, delve into a bit more of an obscure choice that most people probably haven't heard, probably haven't heard of. Um, but that's what this is for. This is about bringing to light, you know, movies, the underrated gems. Um, it was a small kind of indie feature called Thelma and Louise. No, I'm not familiar. <laughs> so there was an, yeah, was a, she was a rising star at the time. They were both rising stars, but Susan Sarandon, Gina Davis, um, I think they kind of faded um, into obscurity after that movie. But um, no, in all seriousness, Thelma and Louise, absolutely love it. That, I remember watching when I was little, again, probably too young to watch it given some of the themes in the movie. Um, but I just loved it. It was so empowering to me, like these two women friends who were just like, screw them, the men in their lives. You know, obviously they had a traumatic experience towards the beginning of the movie. But then they just decide to go on this road trip and they're on the run from the law and they're just there for each other. And it's like, ah, it's just like, yeah, it has all the makings of everything that I love in a movie. It's empowering. It's about you know, friendships over like men and like, yeah, I just, I, I really, really love it. I'm, I'm assuming you've seen it. Yes. I saw, I also saw Thelma and Louise way too young. I remember being at a sleepover um, and a friend and I, I think we were in like year seven or year eight. And we felt like it was kind of like, we had to do it like to, as, as young women, it was important viewing. So we watched it without really knowing anything about it other than the fact that it was like a movie about ride or die bitches and it was amazing um were very traumatized by the opening of the film um but I agree it's like kind of like the sort of like gritty reality of female friendship I would say obviously they're on the run from the law throughout the entire film but there's there's a lot of kind of like moments of the film where it's really just sort of like quiet time between them like just being in the car with them in their friendship which I like, I eat that shit up. I, that's all I want to watch, really. If it's not a disaster movie or if it's not a Fast and Furious movie, that's what I want to watch. I want to watch two women just like in real time having conversations about their lives. And that movie does it so well. I'm completely with you on that. And also I'm like, if there is one way to go, like driving your car off the cliff, um, I think is the best way it could possibly be. I feel like when I was little, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what the future holds for me. I feel like that's what I see for me. Like um, some really dramatic escape, with my best friend riding off the edge of a cliff like I you know it's poetic it's beautiful it's dramatic um again setting up very unrealistic expectations for the, my future but um <laughs> yeah no I absolutely loved it um well everyone that was uh us chatting about our favorite female friendship movies the good um thank you so much for tuning in you've been watching the film whispers on bent tv and uh, we'll talk to you next time